keep playing or do you think things or you don't? Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to this Sunday of Pentecost, the day when we celebrate <laughs> the Holy Spirit. <laughs> God has done wonderful things. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us with the power of the rushing wind that we may faithfully serve you in all that we do. For Christ has called each of us in God's love. Come, Holy Spirit, be with us today. Help us to boldly proclaim Christ risen. Give us strength, strength and courage to share the good news of your love and your presence. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's join together in singing Shine, Jesus Shines. <laughs>
Today I'm reading the scripture in Acts 10. We usually hear on this Sunday, Acts 2, uh, when the Holy Spirit comes upon the disciples. But this story could kind of be considered the second Pentecost or the second coming of the Holy Spirit upon a group of people. Then Peter replied, I see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. In every nation, he accepts those who fear him and do what is right. This is the message of the good news for the people of Israel, that there's peace with God through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after John began preaching his message of baptism. And you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we apostles are witnesses of all he did throughout Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on the cross. But God raised him to life on the third day. Then God allowed him to appear, not to the general public, but to us whom God had chosen in advance to be his witnesses. We were those who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he ordered us to preach everywhere and to testify that Jesus is the one appointed by God to be the judge of all, the living and the dead. He is the one all the prophets testified about, saying that everyone who believes in him will have their sins forgiven through his name. Even as Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the message. The Jewish believers who came with Peter were amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in their tongues and praising God. Then Peter asked, can anyone object to their being baptized now that they have received the Holy Spirit just as we did? So he gave orders for them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Afterwards, Cornelius asked him to stay with them for several days. This is the word of God. I see that Braylon's here with us this morning. Did you want to come and see me, Braylon? Or are you going to stay with Grandma? She can stay with her. She doesn't have to come up. How you doing? You having a good day? Do you know what the wind is? Do you? Do you know what the wind is? How do you know that there's wind? Can you see the wind? Yeah. You can see it? Yeah. How? Yeah. You can see it when it acts with something else. When it, when it hits that pinwheel, you know the wind is there. Well, today we're talking about the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God is something just like the wind where the only way we know it is when we feel it. We feel the wind on our face. We can see it happening. So today is Pentecost when we think about God's spirit. And you can have that one, okay? Yeah. And you can sit down. And I'm just going to carry on with this, with this thought uh, to all of us here as we think about how do we know where the spirit is? Yesterday I attended the funeral of an old friend uh, who died quite suddenly. And uh, the officiant for the service was uh, my predecessor as youth pastor in uh, First Methodist in Clearwater. And uh, so Steve uh, was there, and he gave this really interesting message about eternal life. And he said this about eternal life. He, he said, when we come to the table like we are today, we're remembering the new covenant. 
The new covenant that Christ brought us in saying, this is my body given to you for the forgiveness of sins, and this is the cup of the new covenant. The new covenant being that promise that Jesus made that we would be with him in paradise, in eternal life. You know, you know, that was exactly what he said to the criminal that was hanging on the cross beside him. You will be with me today in paradise. And that's the message that we're used to hearing, is this idea that coming ahead of us is going to be this time of eternal life and wonderful uh, union with God. And that's a great thing. But what Steve said that I really appreciated was that he said, but eternity is also in the now. It's in the presence that we know that we will be reunited with our loved ones someday in paradise. But we're also united with our loved ones now. We feel their spirit with us just as we feel the Holy Spirit with us now. And that's a kind of eternity, to know that they are with us always. And we also have the eternity of the past, as we remember experiences of the Spirit with us. Usually, you wear red to represent Pentecost. But today, I decided I was going to wear yellow. And the reason I'm wearing yellow is that we've been talking about in our family the spirit that is with us. Janelle went in to see her father this week, and he had a bag of M&Ms by his chair. And Janelle said, well, do I need to get you some more M&Ms, Dad? And he took the bag, and he looked at it, and he looked inside it. If you know Dave, how he would do that. He looked inside it, looks around, and he, there's one yellow M&M in the bag. And he said to Janelle, I'm saving this one for Grace, his departed wife. And she loved yellow. And one of our favorite pictures that was taken just a little while before she passed away, she had this just beautiful yellow dress on. And so, for us, when we see that yellow, that yellow represented in the daffodil, which is also a symbol in our family, that yellow is the reminder of the spirit of grace that is still with us. So this morning, we're going to think about how the Holy Spirit comes in many forms, in many ways, to many people. Let's sing our hymn, Baptized in Water, which is on page 482 in the Purple Hymnal.
how do you know that the Holy Spirit is present? You know, it's just something we talk about. We talk about that particularly as we talk about baptism. We think about being baptized by water. But there's also this this thing that we teach about that, that along with that physical baptism, there's supposed to be a spiritual baptism. The coming of the Holy Spirit upon the believer in Jesus Christ. But how do you know that that person has been baptized in the Spirit. How do you know on this Pentecost Sunday that the Holy Spirit is really here? You know, it's, that, it's, that, it's, it's as elusive sometimes as that wind on the pinwheel. We, we, we kind of know that it's there. We kind of have experienced it somehow. But how do you know the Holy Spirit is here. How, how do you come to really experience that? You know, if we were in a Pentecostal congregation, we could say that we know that the Holy Spirit is upon us because Jerry is going to stand up and speak in glossolia, which is the angel's tongues, and she's going to witness to us in the, in the, in the, the language of the angels. And we're all going to be there going, Wow! She's got the Holy Spirit. Or, 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 or Tom's going to come down here and I'm going to smack him on the head and he's going to be slain in the Spirit, fall down. Because the Spirit's here. You know, that's, that's why the Pentecostals say that you know, they know that the Spirit, Holy Spirit is with them. Have you ever, ever attended a really high Pentecostal service? It's pretty intense. And I don't know what to make of all of that goings on. It's not how I experience the Holy Spirit, but I've certainly seen that kind of thing going on. If we were in my family's hometown of Golly Bridge, West Virginia, we could go up Scrabble Creek this morning and we could come to a little garage church that's there. And after communion, when we've been taking the body and blood of Jesus in us, the way we know that the Spirit has come into us through that communion is we'll go handle snakes. We'll handle rattlesnakes. And we won't get bitten because the Holy Spirit is with us. Now, my family is not of the snake handling tradition. Down the creek in Golly Bridge proper is a little Baptist church, an American Baptist church. That's where my dad grew up, was in this little Baptist church in Golly Bridge. You knew that the Spirit of God was in that place by this. My grandmother always had an open table on Sunday afternoon. And she would make a big roast beef, and she would make a turkey or a chicken. And anybody who wanted to come over to Grandma's house for Sunday lunch was invited. And I mean everybody. In the 1950s, when my dad was going through high school, he would bring, <gasps> wait for it, black people home. You knew that. The Holy Spirit was in this congregation because in that time, they were willing and able to be inclusive to the invitation to come to the table. When my dad was ordained in that little church in West Virginia in 1962, he chose a song to be sung at that ordination And it's called, I Feel the Winds of God Today. So let me read those lyrics to you and see how that reflects in terms of his understanding of the Holy Spirit being upon him as he began his ministry of preaching. I feel the winds of God today. Today my sail I lift. Though heavy oft with drenching spray and torn with many a rift, 
If hope but light the water's crest, and Christ my bark will use, I'll seek the seas at his behest and brave another cruise. It is the wind of God that dries my vain, regretful tears, until with braver thoughts shall rise the pure, brighter years. If cast on shores of selfish ease or pleasure I should be, oh, let me feel your refreshing breeze, and I'll put back to sea. If ever I forget your love and how that love was shown, lift high the blood-red flag above. It bears your name alone. Great pilot of my onward way, you will not let me drift. I feel the winds of God today. Today, my sail, I lift. How do you know if someone has been baptized in the Holy Spirit? Even as Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who was listening to his message. Do you remember what his message said? It said that the promise of the new covenant was to the people of Israel. And he's preaching to a bunch of Gentiles. And what does he see as he sees what he knows to be the presence of the Holy Spirit? That these Gentiles, whom in his mind God did not come for, it wasn't the promised people, it wasn't the chosen people, it wasn't whom Christ came to save, it was these Gentiles. And he says, I can't deny it, the Holy Spirit's here. Not at all what I thought. Not at all what I expected. But I can't deny it. For they heard them speaking in other tongues and praising God. Now, I, I told you, I don't really understand the Holy Spirit in, in angel talk. I don't understand that hearing in other languages comes in that way. But there are some universal feelings that we can get that's in many languages. I'm particularly talking about music, about our singing together, and that that has a commonality for us. Do, do you know the, the Swahili hymn, We Are Marching in the Light of God? We are marching in the light of God. 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 I learned that first on a mission trip to the Dominican Republic, which speaks Spanish. So I learned that hymn as Marcharemos en la luz del Dios. 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 I don't know if you know this hymn. I don't know if you've heard it before. But I told you, it was Swahili. It's African. And the African goes, Si yahama kuka ne kwekos. 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 Now, I wish that Lisa, back on the tech board, could do this miraculously right now. It's possible, but she's not going to be able to do it this moment. But wouldn't it be great if we'd laid down three tracks and you'd heard that simultaneously, English and Spanish and Swahili. I've been in congregations where they sang those words in all those different languages together. And it's just such an amazing feeling to hear that word of God in those songs coming out with that kind of power. Probably the hymn that I have heard in the most languages is Jesus Loves Me. I know Jesus Loves Me in English. I've heard it also, I also know it in Spanish. I've also heard it in Kiowa, in Comanche, in Cherokee, in Haitian, in Burmese, and Korean. And my best memory of singing Jesus Loves Me 
was when I would go and do hymn sings at Westminster Palms Retirement Community. And one of our members at the time was there was Dr. Gates. And as I would be accompanying that music on my guitar, Jesus loves me, this I know, I would hear this delicate, lilting voice of Dr. Gates as she sang, Isu I wo woozy dow. Dr. Gates was raised in a missionary family in China. And she would sing that song in Chinese as we sang it in English. Dr. Gates was trained as a medical missionary. Can you appreciate this? That when she went to school in the 1930s, that she was one of two women to graduate with her medical doctorate. She was one of two females, predominantly for this reason. The school only allowed 20% of the class to be female. And she was in that school. She graduated. She was a medical doctor. And she felt the moving of the Holy Spirit to be a missionary doctor. And so in the middle of World War II, she headed out for Burma. She couldn't go the usual route through the Panama Canal because of the war. She had to go all the way across the Atlantic, down around the Horn of Africa, and up to Burma. And there she trained nurses for years at the hospital there that specialized in leprosy. She's an amazing woman, a woman of such heart and such faith. And uh, as I think about this Sunday, as I think about how do we know if someone has been baptized in the Holy Spirit, I have another memory of Dr. Gates. And Jane Washington can attest to this because she was there that Sunday. And it was the Pentecost Sunday where we sat in the sanctuary and we had movable pews there and we had had a dinner theater the night before. And so we were gathered around the tables and we had this agape meal, breakfast together, and had broken bread together. And there was this, this wonderful sense within the congregation. And Dr. Gates was, was very hunched over with osteoporosis. And she would just be frailly moving along. And at this time, she had begun in the beginning stages of dementia. And sometimes she wouldn't quite have everything together. My favorite line that everybody knows of hers is she asked her a question and she couldn't remember the answer. And she'd say, my mind is just like Swiss cheese, full of holes. So this was this woman that was sitting here at the tables with us as we were celebrating this time together. And I got up to bring the message for the day. And all of a sudden, Dr. Gates stood up. Not only did she stand up, she stood up as straight as I've ever seen her in her life. And through the window, and this is where I said that you can ask Jane afterwards, through the window, all of a sudden, this beam of light came right upon her. And she began to testify. She began to testify how she felt the Spirit of God in this place, in this community, with these people. And she affirmed and confirmed that we were a welcoming community that brought the word, the good news of Jesus Christ to people. I felt some of that same spirit last week when we were in our joint worship together. Not only did I feel it, but others felt it. There was an excitement that happened here last week that was, was tangible. 
it, it, it happens this way sometimes, and it happened this way last week, which was that three of us preached the message. I opened it, Kitty Rawson did the center part, and Lois Lehman did the conclusion. We didn't consult with one another about those parts. I mean, we, we had talked to each other about, okay, you know, you're going to kind of talk about Micah Center, you're going to talk about uh, racism, you're going to talk about, you know, and, and, and that way, but just generally. And the m- flow between us, the one single message that came through that sermon was more about the Spirit moving through us than it was the particular words we chose to say. It was, it was there as our combined choir sang beautiful thing. So last week as we concluded our Easter celebration and was talking about bringing new life, that we bring new life into people's lives tangibly through our missions kinds of work, and that just like, Pete, uh, just like Paul raised Tabitha, that we raise people to new life. And we're moving now into this question about how do we know that we've been baptized in the Holy Spirit? We're, we're saying it this way. How do you live into the new covenant? How do you live into that eternal promise that Jesus brings us? Peter saw the power of the Holy Spirit fall upon the Gentiles, those people who were not expecting to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. Living into the new covenant, into the new grace, into the new love, is having eyes to see Pentecost again in our community of faith. We move into a time of prayer, and uh, I'm going to ask Jay if he would, would come and play for us and, uh, as we receive our offering, and you can do that online at circle.faith slash give, or there's an offering plate here in the sanctuary. Let us bring our gifts to God, and take a moment to meditate on the Spirit with us. As we come to bring our prayers to God, as we bring everything to the Lord in prayer, let us be mindful of those people with whom the Spirit had been in the past that have given us these memories of the Holy Spirit. Oh, I just got a prayer request, so... And so uh, we're going we're gonna, to uh, um, do that prayer and, and think about those people whom we have felt spiritually connected with. You know, I know that, that, that Tom just came back from uh, a funeral in Fort Walton Beach where his son-in-law passed away. And so we, we remember him and his family as they go through that, that time. We, we ask prayers for the Scarsbrook family as Gary has passed away and as they deal with their grief on that. 
And others of us here have those memories of people. They may not be quite as recent as that, but let's remember those people that we have had a spiritual connection with in our prayers today. Let us be prayerful for those children that were massacred in Texas. And, and more importantly for me is the prayer for the now. The now for, and I'm sorry I don't remember her name, but the 11-year-old that covered herself in blood so that she could pretend to be dead to survive that. And why I'm saying we need to pray for her now is the boldness, the bravery, the strength, not of getting through that event, but of being willing to go before Congress and witness to them as she grieves her classmates that died around her. Let us be prayerful of all the events that are happening now where the Holy Spirit is moving through people to bring a message of good news. And let us pray for the future, for the future of our congregations, the future of the church of Jesus Christ. And we're also going to pray for Gracie, Gracie Rao, has a liver and white blood cell count tests to be normal. Um, she has a lot of uh, health issues, and so we want to pray for uh, Gracie today. And for Terry, who is exhausted and feeling a bit defeated. Let us come before God with our prayers. God, your name in Hebrew evokes for us the understanding that you have always been in the past. And we have seen your activity and your movement throughout the years gone by. And your name evokes the idea of the great I am. The God that is living, the God that is here present with us now in every aspect of our lives. And you are the God that will be on into eternity. We lift up prayers for our loved ones who have guided us in the path. We bring prayers for those who are suffering in the moment. Bring about your healing, that healing of body, soul, and mind to those who so desperately seek the Holy Spirit's presence today. Lord, hear our prayers of hope for tomorrow for new life in you, for an eternity basking in your glory. And we pray together that prayer that Jesus taught to his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Our hymn in preparing for communion is A Place at the Table. It is 769 in the purple hymnal.
exciting the share with wisdom and grace dividing the power for men and men us to God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy Justice and joy. For young and for old, a place at the table. at the table abuser of use with me to forgive in anger and hurt a mindset of mercy for just and unjust a new way to live God will delight when we at the table to live without fear and simply to be to work to speak out to witness and worship for everyone born the right to be free God will delight when we are created and joy, compassion and peace. Yes, God will delight when we are creators of justice. Justice and joy. Join me in our communion litany. On this day of Pentecost, may the Spirit dance with you. May the Spirit dance with you as well. May God's grace be poured into your hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, to fill our hearts with love. May God's word become your language of praise. Come, Holy Spirit, to teach us new songs of thanksgiving. God of wonder and joy, creating everything imaginable, and those things only you could envision. Pouring out your breath of life, we were shaped in your image, so we might enjoy life with you in goodness. But we tried to build a tower to reach those temptations just out of our reach, convinced that they would make us happier than your joy. Old men and women, young girls and boys, those we call prophets and those we call meddlers, some speaking your words of invitation, so we might return to you. But we thought they were drunk or foolish or didn't have a clue as to what is really important in life. So you chose to send us your child who spoke of your whispers to his heart, calling us to trust in your once again. 
with those who dare to imagine your wonder, with those who wonder what is going on, we sing of the thanksgivings filling our hearts. Holy, holy, holy are you. God who would gather us, all creation joins in praising you this day. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who sends the advocate to us. Hosanna in the highest. As we come to this table, we remember the spirit which was poured out at your baptism. So the spirit which fills us with new hope and life. The spirit which transforms us into faithful people. And so we share that mystery we call faith. Jesus gave his life, entering the silence of death. Jesus was raised as resurrection's new song was sung. Jesus will come, and so we sing as long as we can with the breath of the Spirit filling us. Once again, as you did so long ago, pour out your Spirit upon those gathered in this place as called by you and upon the gifts of this table. So we remember that Jesus took bread, blessed it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body given for you. And after supper, Jesus took the cup, said a blessing, and gave it to the disciples. This is the cup of the new covenant. Come and receive these symbols of the new covenant, as this is the first Sunday of the month as you come we'll just continue to stand around the table so that we can close with our fellowship hymn Bless Be the Tie That Binds Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love, the fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. Feel the Holy Spirit that is here within this fellowship, within this circle, going with the love of God, may we proclaim Christ risen, Christ alive, the Spirit with us. Amen. 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 Amen.